Hi, Jeff Rhodes here with another video on Microsoft 365 and particularly Power Automate. So uh, I want to uh, thank Naveed, one of our uh, subscribers to the channel, and he sent me this email here and along with an Excel file to see if uh, I could help out on it, on uh, getting the emails sent to the managers and so forth. So uh, first way I tried it didn't actually work very well, so I'll show you that first and then show you what did work. So, um, And we'll come back to these later, but what we're trying to do is get an email to the users that show like which of the 12 month sets of training are due. So we're trying to get something like that with these different kind of fake users. So let's jump over to the Excel file. So the first thing is this was an Excel and we've got the Jeff Allen and so forth. And what I did in there is just put various emails that all come to me so I could test it. So I've got kind of unique emails for each person. So a couple things that can can really bite you here and it actually bit me a little bit on the testing. So the first thing to do is when we're doing our columns, you'll see I wanted to do an OData query to kind of find because there's like a column. We're trying to find each one of these where it says do like that. And it turns out I can't do multiple of those inside of with an Excel data source. But there was also, even if I had, you have to really watch an extra space. So some of these had an extra space in the end. And the other one at first didn't some of this do also because so, if you're trying to say equals rather than contains and it gets a little ugly just be really careful on your data so I got I searched for do space and look for any that had a space in it um, so some just watch in your core data as well and if you can do a drop down you know depending on the source of it if you know where you can make it where you have to select from a drop down that'll keep you from getting extraneous spaces that can cause some errors. So let me jump over to Power Automate and show you what doesn't work first. So I've got this one and, uh, you know, manually triggered when I was testing it. And I got far enough in. Uh, now I'm not entirely sure why this one uh, showing this error, probably because of the error. But what I wanted to do was uh, a O data filter query where I'm basically and that's where those spaces come in. So I'm saying if January is equal to due or February is equal to due or March and so far forth. And if I had I have a notepad of it as well, so you can see it a little bit bigger. So yeah, that was the O data query. And it doesn't give an error at first, but when we go to try to test it, it gives an error. And then what I was gonna do go back to this is it was then kind of hard to get the list of which one uh, if I can get rid of that and so I was going to come through and do a check so I was going to have like an array of months and so if the January column said do so sorry if it came here and said is this column is equal to the, the do then I was going to add it to an array and then when we go to put it in the table I was going to join it back to get a list of kind of common delimited list of all the months that were due for that um, for that team and so forth but as it turns out I uh, didn't have to worry about that because if I came in and tested it luckily I didn't do I only did January February March and then said I better go ahead and test this but you can see it says uh, Oh, something didn't exist. Sorry, I guess now it's failed. I could do it again. But basically it said that you can't do more than one EQ in uh, with an Excel data source. So uh, that one failed. And I think since then it kind of lost its its uh, connection to the table. So no fun there. So let's go back to Excel. So then what I thought, well, if I could actually do a custom column in Excel, that that would actually work better because then I wouldn't have to check because it was a little challenging to figure out which one was due. Um, and also I needed to read 12 columns at once. So what I decided to do is a add a column here called training results. And then I really wanted to do 
a uh, couple different things. I basically want to do a concatenate, um, but I, I looked up in the Excel formulas and there's this text join formula that's actually better. So the first parameter, you can kind of see it here. Oh, that's inside the if. But anyway, the first parameter is the separator. So I had comma space and then true means to ignore the empties. And then I basically did an if each one. So if J2 is, oops, I start here. F2 is January. So if it's equal to do, then I go ahead and just put the column name in, else I leave it blank, which means it'll get skipped. And so that was kind of nice. So notice what happens if I get anything. So April was due, and then if I get multiple ones like that, it'll say January and April. So that made it a lot better. So I had a couple of these where we had a couple of them do it once. And so let's go over and look, go back to Power Automate. So I'm not going to build this from scratch because it takes long enough to explain this. So I'm just going to show it to you. So it's this one. And you can go to some earlier vi uh, videos and I explain some of that as well. So I just set it to go every week at 8 a.m. And then I need a number of variables. So you know, told you in other videos, I like to go ahead and put them in the name. So I'm going to need a supervisor email and an old supervisor email. And we basically need to send an email every time the supervisor changes. And then I'm going to need the supervisor name, particularly because I'm emailing it to myself, so i got to make sure I can keep them straight. And then I want to put in a supervisor or a notification style. So this I'm going to put in just so that I can get borders on my table. So that's a little bit of HTML I'm going to throw into Outlook. And then I'm going to make a table, and I've done this in some other videos, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on it, but I'm doing it with HTML. So I put the table tag, the row tag, the heading, and I got department, team, and do training. So that's exactly what Naveed showed me in the email. And then I'm going to pin to that. And then at the end, I'll have to put the closing table tag. And then list rows. We've covered that in other videos as well. I saved it in SharePoint and documents. There's the S Excel SX file. I did need to make, let's go back to there. I need to make this into a table. And you can tell that I go to formulas name manager and see where it says table two because I was messing around with it. I made table one and then I changed it. So that's why this says table two and notice how when you drop down it has that selected. And then it's a little bit challenging to figure out the null. There's some stuff in various places. It turned out what worked was this is the name of the column NE for not equals quote quote single quotes. The word null and stuff didn't work and then we order by supervisor email. That's really important. I did want to order by team as well. Said that you can only order by one thing at a time right now. So that was good enough. And then we're going to loop through the rows. Seen that before. The only choice we have is the rows in our table. It says body value. And then here's where we get a little bit of of logic. So I'm going to set the supervisor email to just be the supervisor email from Excel. And then I've got to check. So I got to say if var supervisor email is not equal to blank, because I the first time through it's the old supervisor email is blank and I don't want to do anything yet. Um, so I make sure it's not blank and it's not equal to the old one. So basically what's happening is this side is once we've at least been through once, we'll send an email. Okay, so we're this, if we go down this path, we're ready to send an email. So the first thing we do is we append the closing tag, this slash table on there, so I'm ready to go. And then we send an email. So we're sending it to the var old supervisor email because that's the one that we'll set in a minute, but that's the one that we're ready to go because we've already switched lines. Let me, this makes it a little bit simpler. Let me filter this down to ones that aren't blank. So these are basically the emails and I've got it already sorted by 
uh, supervisor email, same way. So what I'm expecting, I'm going to come through once, come through twice, come through the three times. I should get three lines in my table, three rows. When I get to this info at platcanyon.com, now I'm ready to go. I want to close the tag off. And this is now the supervisor email, so I need to send to the old supervisor email, which is this admin at platcanyon.com. So let's go back to it. So I'm sending to the supervisor name, which we got to make sure, but we haven't reset that yet. Notice I'm only setting the supervisor email to the new thing. So that's as long as we've set that, we're okay. So I put this... Uh, I put the style in there at the top of the email and then I say dear supervisor name and then I put this table in that we've been building. So that sends email. So we'll do that in a minute. And then what I want to do is I need to reset that supervisor notification table to what I started with so I can start looping for the next time around. And then notice in the false I don't actually do anything. So if it's false, then it continues down here. I go ahead and set the supervisor name, which is just the first name, space, last name. And then I set this var supervisor email to the supervisor email. So the first time through, that'll be the first time it gets set. In the case where we just sent the email, now I've sent that so that those are the same. And we keep looping around until that changes again. And then, very importantly, I'm going to put the one row that we're on because we're on a, a row and so I'm going to put the department in and this is column tags, the team, and then that training results, which is the one that, you know, is the common delimited one. And then notice all this is inside the loop. So I've gone through. So if we go back to Excel, it'll come through when I get to Mike Davis, I'll send it to Phil Harris, who will just have one line. I got three lines of Davis. When I get to Shaw, it'll send it to Mike Davis. When I get to Tanwood, it'll send the four to Shaw. But when I get through Tanwood, I'm done with the loop. Notice I haven't sent Tanwood yet. So we got to take care of that choice or that situation. So I come down here. So immediately when I'm done, I go ahead and append the table because I've got like an unfinished table right now. And then I just need to make sure if, if the whole thing had been blank and nobody was past due, then this VAR supervisor email would be blank because it would have just skipped the whole thing. So I just make sure that's not blank. And if it is, I just do the exact same thing I did before. I just copy that action. And by the way, one thing I love in the new designer is you can copy these actions. So you just right click and say copy action and then you can go and paste it down here. So pretty slick. All right, so let's go in and test it. I could wait a week, but it's easier to test it. So I'll just say save and test. It looks like I must have saved something. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. And I'm gonna run the flow. Now, as we're waiting, let's just think what we want to, to see. So we should see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's the first thing we want to look at is do we see 14 rows? Ha! Ah, good sign there. And if we look at it for a second, we'll see the first one didn't go through. We're looking at this left side. The second one didn't go through. Third one didn't go through. Fourth one went here and we sent the email. And then it goes on. And if, again, if we go back to Excel, that's what we're expecting. So let me check my emails because I got to wait for a second for all those to come in. So I'll try to show these in order as they come. All right. So here's Here's the Jeff Allen one. Okay, April, January, March, Department 28, Team 1, Team 2. So let's go back, Department 28, 
91, teams one and two. And let's go over and look at the first three. It should say April, Jan, and March. Let's go back and look at it. April, Jan, and March. So, so, so far, so good. So the next one we should see is Phil Harris. One row, so that's good. And we should see Mike Davis, three. Mike Davis, three. And we should see Troy. Oops. Troy Shaw should have four. There we go. Notice again how it's got the two of them on line loans. Let's just check that one. 79 and two. Just make sure it's exactly right. Should be that line right there. It says March and April. March and April. All right, looking pretty good. And then the last one, Daniel Tanwood should be three. That's the one that got outside the loop, did three. So again, a uh, little bit of logic in there to kind of keep everything straight. Probably the hardest one is just that loop where we're switching between uh, the supervisor so we know when to send it. But uh, and then the other thing that we just really had to do was that custom column in Excel. So hopefully, uh, Naveed, that's something that you can can do. But if nothing else, uh, hopefully give some some different ways to kind of skin that cat. And by the way, I didn't really talk about the uh, the borders, but that was that style. See how it went and put it in the borders. And we could have sent a Teams chat and stuff as well, but didn't do it on this one. So. Hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you next time. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.